So, last night, oh, this is, this is pretty, it's incredible. And I, I really have to be stopped saying that, you know, and being shocked by the reaction of, of Brexiteers to what is going on. Because last night was the absolute perfect storm to show the absolute, not only hypocrisy of Brexiteers, the absolute sheepish nature of Brexit supporters. And I have said before many times, it's not the Brexit supporters we should be going after, it's the Brexiteers. They're the ones who are responsible. They're the ones who have caused all this mess that we are in. They're the ones who are now part of the coronavirus recovery group trying to uh, force Boris Johnson to reopen the economy as fast as possible, which could lead to essentially us being in yet another year of lockdown if it all goes wrong. You know, so much could go wrong in such a short time, and yet these are the people that are backing this because they're free market fundamentalists, and all they care about is essentially the market being open. Not only that, but they are what I like to call, um, I think I, I think they need to be in a class of their own, the Brexit cheerleaders. And the Brexit cheerleaders are really essentially all the right-wing press who go out and woo, woo and round up the their audiences to go out and support Brexit. And that's who we're really talking about today, these, these Brexit cheerleaders highlighting the absolute worst aspects of Brexit you can possibly think of. So, what happened last night? Well, uh, I was playing D&D, unfortunately my character had, uh, had died, so I had a bit of, had a bit of time between, uh, uh, between rounds as to, as to, uh, as to stuff to do. So, I, I decided, oh, I'll have a, I'll have a quick, um, quick flitter on, uh, on social media. And I had a look at Twitter, and I just noticed in the Twitter trending um, side, this, there was this, just one number, it was a thousand. And I'm like, okay, what's what's this? Why is why is a thousand tweeting? Has is there some sort of um, new uh, hashtag? Is you know why why what's this a thousand number? What if this a thousand number people are talking about? And it was about a BBC article. Um, I'm not gonna. I, w I was thinking of should I go forth and, and read it today but to be honest the only thing you have to know as, as far as I said from that article is that essentially a thousand uh, European financial firms have essentially shown interest um, in the city of London that's essentially the, what the article was but it doesn't say for the exact reasons why they are showing interest and i think we'll get into that later in the video um but before we do continue <laughs> before i remind myself um please do remember to hit that like and share button that does help out the channel massively also down below there is a link to my patreon page and a one of nation link called buy me a coffee where you can well buy me a coffee and you know thank you to all the people who do go and support the channel that way so of course this is where the Brexit cheerleaders come in, because as you as you may well may very well know on this channel, we've been following the this continuing catastrophe of Brexit right back to 2016, and a lot of our predictions are slowly coming true. Um, you know, and a lot of it, it could be probably even much worse. And a lot of the logistics companies are saying. It is going to get a lot worse when essentially all the new rules and like the grace period starts to end because a lot of companies stockpiled at the end of last year and a lot of companies that, again, relied on trade with the EU were medium to small businesses and now they're suffering. And we've had countless articles of companies saying, 
we can't transport to Europe anymore. We can't sell to our European customers anymore. We have lost customers because we can't get that product to them as fast as we used to. You know, we can't do business as we used to. We are less competitive in a lot in our basically our next door market. And it doesn't matter that a lot of the Brexiteers and indeed the Brexit supporters, uh, not the, Brexit, the Brexit cheerleaders, shall we say, were last night championing this whole a thousand saying that, you know, these businesses were coming to the city of London because of Brexit. Well, hold on for a second, because those aren't the jobs we need in this country. We need good, um, good paying jobs for essentially our lower, you know, the, the working class in this country. That's what they need, you know, and there used to be hundreds of manufacturing jobs and you're going to see the manufacturing industry in the UK be all but gutted. The manufacturing in this UK will shrink. Um, it's just, you know, it's just how much it will shrink by. And like I say, we had a quote, a fantastic quote, and I think it's well worth remembering, the quote from the guy from the University of Sussex that who said the best case scenario is that trade reduces, but that will mean less jobs less uh, in, and less investment and a smaller economy. And that will cost jobs. This is just going to be a continuing lurching disaster. And yesterday, all these Brexit cheerleaders were like, ha, Remainers are silent. A thousand jobs coming to the UK because of Brexit. Yeah. Well, first of all, the again, when you read the article, it never actually said that these companies were moving jobs to the UK. Indeed, many of these financial companies, and I think many people myself suspect, what these are really going to be is that they're just going to set up a, a post box. You know, these financial companies probably do have toeholds or some sort of business in the UK. So essentially for them to continue doing business, they just need a post box. That doesn't bring jobs, investment, or anything like that to the UK. So, and I, I, I've said it right from the very beginning of this year. The Brexiteers, the Brexit cheerleaders, the Brexit supporters are going to try and use anything possible to try and justify that Brexit has been a success. And yet, it has been anything but a success. And... The further this goes, the more and more disasters we're going to see and the more and more companies are going to suffer. And they can only blame the coronavirus so much because a lot of these problems are being caused by Brexit. And these aren't teething problems, as the government likes to say they are. These are permanent. This paperwork, which so many companies are struggling with, that the cost that is, has added to their business now makes exporting unprofitable or even a slimmer margin. You know, but this is last night what we what we saw, the, the cheerleading of the 1,000 on, on, Bre on Brexit, and it was just unbelievable. Because you had the Brexit cheerleaders going, ha, remain as silent. And then you had all the Brexit supporters saying, oh, where's, um, you know, Where's so-and-so from from this? Aren't they going to admit that this is, quote, the Brexit dividend we've been waiting for? It ain't a dividend of any way, shape, or form, because I can pretty much guarantee you all these companies are going to bring is a post box. And the jobs and income they provide ain't going to go into the UK. They're going to go into Europe. So, once again, we have the highest form of absolutely Brexit ridiculousness brought to you by, well, the Brexit cheerleaders. Um, and, you know, they'll be the ones, you know, saying in a couple of years, why is our economy so bad? Why is it so bad? Oh, it must be that 
dastardly EU. <laughs> you know? It just, it's beyond belief sometimes. It really, really is. But what can you do? So anyway, as always, thank you for watching. Please do remember to hit that like and share button on your way out. And of course, down below, there's a link to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link. And thank you very much to the people who do support my channel um, either either way. Either if you just hit those like and share buttons or you are a subscriber to my Patreon or you've dropped a bit of a tip in my tip jar for me to buy a coffee. Anyway, uh, that's that and we'll see you all next time.